it's wonderful to actually do a role that you've premiered and just to repeat a role because there's so much that you learn through the years and that you work on and that you can see the progress in just going through the, the process of, of singing the role. Also, we have new directors, conductors, and it's always a pleasure to meet new people and to experience new things. So that brings a different light to it. It brings a different air and character. And so a thought process keeps it fresh. It's intense, yes, it's very intense. And actually it's funny because Rebecca Ruffin starts out as this loquacious, you know, young, talkative, bubbly ca character. Uh, it just breaks my heart because you, you can see this woman who really tried to do everything that she could to keep her family together, to help Charlie, to be you know, a strong mother for her child. And at the end, I mean, she says, look what happened to you my Charlie, my Charles. And so for me, it's encapsulated in Rebecca's, I guess, her progression as a character, as a role. Again, something that we all can see and just feel because it's true, it speaks the truth. And the duet ain't easy being a mother to a, a strong black man and it's just, ain't easy. I mean, you know, it's just such truth. It's such, you know, and it, it, to, we don't even have to start talking about what's happening in the world now, but I'm just saying it's very relevant and it just speaks the truth for me. I have been with Chan Parker, my character, since 2014. I was part of the world premiere cast uh, that did the show at Opera Philadelphia in 2015. And when I received the invitation to sing Chan, she has written a book. She has written a book about her life, her life with Charlie. Um, so it kind of felt like a, a gold mine for me doing research on Chan because here she is and she wrote her perspective of her life with Charlie Parker. So that was a great first way for me to dive in. She was a dancer when she and Charlie met when she was about 18 years old. She was in the jazz scene just as hardcore but on the groupy side of things as Dizzy and Charlie were. There's a lot of pushback with Chan because she is a white woman and she wasn't, you know, from the state married to Charlie but she had two kids with him. So there were a lot of elements that were not okay from her end, you know, of course on Charlie's end but from her her end so that was that's also very interesting in this day and age and how we've grown and come from that you know in the 1950s to where we are now in society so yeah it's been great I am singing Kathleen Annie Panonica de Königswater, which uh, she's also known as Nika or um, the jazz baroness and I just love her in doing my research, I have found that she's quite a thrilling person to play. It's her spirit. She has this rebellious nature about herself. I mean, this woman was born in the Rothschild's fortune, in the height of this Victorian society, so in these repressive views of society. And I think nothing stifled her and suffocated her more than those two things. So she loved jazz because jazz gave her a place. She met Charlie Parker, she met Thelonious Monk, she met Dizzy Gillespie and fell in love with this dysfunctional subculture of jazz and was able to see past the shadows of these musicians into their genius. What I have taken away from this show is that despite social class, culture and race, you can still find yourself bridging the gap in just being your generous self, um, just living every day with an open heart and approaching the other with this open heart, just like Nika. It's always a little bit intimidating to join a cast that's done it multiple times because they have a relationship already, they have a chemistry and you want to fit into the show obviously. Um, they also have specific ideas usually of how things should be or how this should be played or staged. In this case they didn't, they were very open and very kind. But it was really helpful to see people already settled in their characters because it gave the newer people room to explore, knowing that the other person would be solid. A lot of modern American operas are written in sort of that style that are very demanding both in the high registers and the low registers, but I think it's in order to 
tell the story in a, in a more dramatic way or um, illustrate the words or the character. So there is a reason for it. I have to say in the rehearsal process when we were doing like six hours a day and we were all on stage even in, not in our scenes practicing our reactions and things it is a little bit exhausting to have that energy the whole time and really think as if you're that character but I mean it's also really rewarding because you feel like it's your show at the end like our product as a full cast not just as a character.